what is to prevent, say, an uprising that can lead to revolution. And then in a fraction of time, the whole system collapses. It must be a fragile system if it can Yes, it is indeed. <laughs> Basically, it's a high efficiency filter and heat exchange system. Perspiration passes through the first layer and is gathered in the second, where salt is separated. Breathing and walking provide the pumping action. going to be a different show in the sense of I'm going to be putting on some visuals that really are not directly related to what we're going to be talking about. And those visuals are just to allow you to relax more. Um, in addition, I would just suggest that a person just kind of lay back, take it slow, because I'm going to do my best to, to take it slow through this knowledge that we all come to understand, but just putting it in perspective. And then, uh, as I said today earlier, you want to make love to the wisdom, make love to the knowledge, because I think what's happening is, is that with so much information at times, people forget to appreciate what exactly is happening in their transmutation. So, you know, knowledge itself can be confused with wisdom, and we need to understand the difference, because knowledge is like endless data, or the vast face of what's going on in the reality, why wisdom is the application of knowledge at specific times in order for the best results. So, meaning that this knowledge is a part of our introspection. It's like university. It's like going into a library, or going into a cave, and, or going into a book. When you do that, you're going into uh, some kind of tunnel or some kind of world. And so it's important not to confuse knowledge with wisdom, because wisdom is when you come out of that world and you start moving around in your, your activities, and you are moving around based on what you understand, but you're making the actions. You're not just not making any decisions, because we need to realize that with all this knowledge, the knowledge is presented so you can make choices, and hopefully choices that'll put you in balance. And so today, we're gonna talk deeply about that balance. We're gonna talk about a little bit of what's going on in the world, as far as external world. We're gonna talk a lot about what's going on in the inner worlds and different states of consciousness, but more importantly, we're going to hone in on things that you can identify that you know to be factual in the reality. What those things stand for on multiple levels. And then how you can get to a next stage in your own consciousness by realizing the difference between the truth 
and the artificial, which is very close to truth, but not exactly truth. And you're going to see that in signs, shapes, colors, in many different ways. Okay, so again, the purpose for the visuals is also, if, and everyone needs to realize, especially when, you know, you'll get into this at some point, and you'll see that, or some people are already into it, so they see that video is much more difficult than, than something like radio. And it's because you also have to be, you have to have great visual etiquette uh, unless you just want to give people the wrong idea when you're on some kind of visual camera. And so what happens is, is, and this is just something that goes on in the mind, it's something really that's even subconscious. So when a camera turns on, and even a recorder does it to a certain smaller degree, at that point there's like a voyeuring that begins to happen, meaning that all those who will listen to that recording ever can now tap into it right then, especially if it's something that is to be remembered, right? And then, so what I'm saying is, is that also if there is a, a, a video, it's an even deeper reference point to a person being able to tap into that particular point visually. But what we want to concentrate on is we want to concentrate on using different senses beyond the standard five senses. So attempting to not taste, see, hear, smell, touch it, but instead merging all of those and going into a stage of conscience of letting the information pass through you in balance with no judgments so that you can form a larger picture. And this is, would be using your visual cortex or using the, the area that lights up when you get into the third eye activation. But using that visual cortex to do a simple laboratory work, meaning that your mind and your consciousness is like a laboratory. It's where you can build and create something and see if it really works. And this, is, of course, is what Tesla ascribed in his di di uh, diaries that he was doing, that he could see the exact image of what he was creating. He could pick, put all the pictures together and put all the pieces together, excuse me. And then he knew it would work. And so then if he ever got an opportunity to actually create it with the actual um, 3D components or, or physical components that are needed to create it, then it would work. And this is very important for people to understand because, you know, we all face various challenges in life, all of us. And much of those challenges is supposedly not having the means that are necessary to get to what you're trying to get to in life, okay? And this has a lot to do, of course, with what your projections are. But if you want to look at the core matrix to how it works, you have to understand that when you build and there's nothing stronger than building with the tools in your mind, okay? And these tools are, are made of what we call full-spectrum light, but this gives you the ability to actually visualize to a point where it's even solid in your mind what you want to do, what you're about to attempt, attempt, and what may be the outcome of that gesture. Now, of course, we do this all the time. We think about, I'm going to go to the store. So you think about yourself getting in the car, you think about yourself getting there. Sometimes you even say, oh my goodness, it's, it's 4 o'clock, there's going to be too many people in line, so I'm not going to go right now. So this means you literally painted a picture in, an, in another tense of exactly what you were going to go do and the outcome of what you were going to go do. So imagine this heightened several times, thousands of times, to where you actually realize that the easiest way to manifest things in this physical reality is to begin to get back and take back the space that is in your, your mind, per se, or in the deeper recesses of, of yourself, how you're thinking, okay? And I'll show you by the end of today or by the end of this conversation that that space in your mind that you're attempting to get a hold of is known as the holy of holies. Okay, that in the deeper recesses of the mind, deep in there by the pineal gland where your true consciousness resides, that's the holiest of holies. So if the beast or the abomination that creates desolation enters into your holies of holies, then you got a problem on your hands. This is like a bull in a china house. Okay, and what this is really, really about is this is about inside of your consciousness, and I'm just bringing this in scope here, you have something running around that if you've ever just sat down and tried to control it, you realize that it's very difficult to control, and this is your thoughts. And especially if, though, for those who have been in heightened uh, states of consciousness through hallucinogenic substances, which is a little bit of a, 
uh, cheating per se because, I mean, you're only hurting yourself in a tense because you still need to train for being in that other realm. But let's just say you take the, uh, the cheat cheat or the, uh, the game shark <laughs> and then you punch in the code and then you go into this other realm and then you'll notice that your mind is going like a million miles an hour. And all of a sudden, it's manifesting and creating all these different ropes you keep jumping on. And these ropes are based on fears. Sometimes they're based on joys. It's based on every single turn of this, what I'm now seeing as a six-sided cube or a facet of the kind of reality that you're actually living in. So what this means is, is that you have a beast then in your mind just running all around and acting all crazy, and you cannot get this thing under control. So this means that this is the only thing that's really important, that if you can get this thing under control, then every single thing outside of you and around you will obey that because it will only be responding to the frequency that's coming from you. So like I said, let's take it slow and let's make love to the knowledge and the wisdom and let's understand what unconditional love really is, meaning through no judgments, actually perceiving what is around you. So what I want to talk about first is the end of talking. This is also why I've decided to take a break for a while so that we can start season four the right way because season four is going to be about introspection. Season four is going to be about the adventure. It's going to be about experience. And to create that, to bring that into three-dimensional reality so people can enjoy that, to fulfill that, it's going to take more than talk, okay? Because what happens with talk is talk is a very narrow expression, especially if you're speaking something like English. So what could occur is, is that people could start getting you confused. And this could be a very, very disturbing part of your progress through a certain cycle that I call the to know, to dare, to will, and to keep silent. Because what happens is, is that as you're expanding in consciousness, the first thing that's thrown upon you is this role of being a teacher. And everyone knows a teacher is always a student, <laughs> right? And so you start teaching people the knowledge. And then you're using the language to try to teach them. But what happens is that this is a, a, a very beneficial phase for your growth because you get a chance to show people how to challenge thought and what they have confirmed to be true and believed. And generally that's based on programming. So you get a chance to show them that, hey, this faction is really all under this certain stage of mind control. This religion is all under this kind of, uh, 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 of spelling and words and curses and this. And then so you go on and on and on, but we cannot forget that this is still judgment. So no matter if it's the white snake or the black snake, as long as there's going to be some judgment going on, there's still one still particular kind of energy that is present. Okay? But this is a part of the process. So you're, of course, sifting what you think is the wheat from the chafe, the positive from the negative, and you're just cutting through it, right? So this means you're actually carrying a sword. And this is why words are anagram, is an anagram for sword, okay? So you're carrying the sword, and you're dividing, and you're chopping. This is good. This is bad. This is glass. This is fire. This is all of this, right? And you can imagine how long this could really go on. It could go on for parsecs. It can go on for a long time, right? You're just chopping and cutting through, differentiating one thing from another. But it's interesting in this to realize that what's happening to us, why we're doing this, is we're actually chopping ourselves. <laughs> we're actually cutting ourselves. And this is because all is self. So a while ago, years ago, I came into the total realizations of this. But then I realized, the most integral work that needed to be done is someone needed to act like they didn't even know and start it all over again and start taking people through the process of what they went through. This is what I call the third grade teacher. Now, the third grade teacher has to teach children the third grade curriculum so that they could get to the fourth grade. But what happens if those who make it to the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and beyond begin to look back on the third grade teacher and think, Man, he sold third grade, or she sold third grade. Without realizing the places that we're all holding, I want, to I want people to realize that everyone in this reality, from the Queen of England to the bum in Harlem, is actually holding a place in reality and deserves that 
honor and that respect for what they're doing. Okay, and this is the path to, to ridding yourself of the judgments, but it's a long path. <laughs> and trust me, it's one of those things that you either do or you don't. So, and if you don't, you remain here. So this becomes difficult because there's lots of stages of consciousness that fight being able to merge what we call the opposites. Okay? And so this gets us deep into about these four words, to know, to dare, to will, and then to keep silent. And in the beginning, I used to always think that that keep silent part was the part that I just loathed the most because I, I believe that that's what created secret societies. But I was actually wrong. I'll take you through it. To know, I like to spell it G-N-O, as in Gnosticism. It's the ability to know something without reading about it. You can kind of see it all around you, okay? That's the awakening part of things. You become awake. You start knowing, all oh, this person and this, this kind of being and this, I can't give up my energy. That's to know. What comes next is to dare <laughs> because everyone in the, else in the reality and the majority is actually doing that. You're daring to not. And you start posting stuff and losing friends and you're just daring. You're talking about the God and <laughs> you're just trying to push the envelope completely into just daring to see what's going to happen, right? But then maturity starts setting in and you realize, okay, that's, that's all action. Let me get into my will. Meaning that now you start building a reality. You start realizing that you're in full control of the whole thing. And if you feel up to it, if you're motivated about it, then you can accomplish it. And this is called the will, or as they say, the tarot, or the uh, rota, meaning to rotate. A wheel, okay? Phi, the circle, the spiral, okay? So this is very interesting. But then there comes this other point that you realize that words are an injustice to who you really are, okay? And this was what we talked about a few weeks before about the amen, A-M-E-N, or your name, N-A-M-E, meaning hidden. But hidden not in the tense that someone just wants to keep it from you, but hidden in the tense that it could never be pronounced in any of these languages. Because your body is giving off from its organs, as the sound means an organ or a piano, a specific tone and a vibration that is unique to that moment and what you're experiencing. And it can never be duplicated again. To revisit it would be almost impossible. It's a unique signature. You would, bring, you would need to bring everyone in Congress again. The guy that pissed you off, the refrigerator that was in the room, all uh, the substance that you took in your system, the dinner that you ate that night, the chemicals that the guy put in it, the Monsanto that raised the plant, the guy who made the decision. You see, you would have to bring so many components back to relive that one moment, that one frequency, that one tone. I'm in. It would be just hidden and obscure, and that's really what the abyss is made out of. Okay? So this was interesting then, because I realized that this keep silent thing was not necessarily about not expressing yourself, but being a little bit more tactful about expressing yourself in a language. When you can express yourself in a multifaceted way, you can get into the experience of people physically. You can create massive platforms. You can design an invention that cures hundreds of thousands. And this is all if you could figure out how an attempt to keep silent how to hold your light for enough time to let it charge. Because what happens is, is that when you push out your light and you push that into an individual that doesn't even believe and doesn't even know what you're talking about, what happens is because every being is a mirror, that is a mirror of you when you didn't believe and you know, didn't know what you were talking about. Okay? So it's going into a black hole then. Look at the vision. It's going right into a black hole. And one day, that black hole will be filled with enough light from collective people pushing their light into it at a certain point that it will awaken itself. But let's just, just as the sun is doing this world, but let's just say you don't have a lot of this to keep expending. There's been too much giving up of power, giving up of current. So one has trouble with their kundalini, trouble with their, their, their pay, their paycheck. 
the, how much money they're getting. They have trouble in all the fields that equal abundance. The only option for many of these individuals is to invert, which would give them the opposite side of everything, okay, the shadow side of everything. I call it the monkey's paw. It's like you get a lot of money, but you can't spend it. Or you, you actually, I, I, the story of the monkey paw, the lady wished for long hair, but by the end of the whole wish, she had, had to cut her hair to buy a, well, actually, excuse me, she wished for a comb. And at the end of the wish, she had to cut her hair in order to be able to get the money to buy the comb. You see, it's a monkey's paw, meaning that those who invert themselves and think, well, I'm just going to, I can go and get it that way, and I could do it like that, end up in a situation, billions of dollars, straight miserable. <laughs> Like, it's every single moment ringing on all five phones that, oh my goodness, I need help, this, 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 this. So, realizing that the multifaceted expression of you is for you to begin to cultivate, for you to begin to curate yourself, okay? This is the word, the key word that me and my good friend Jason were using was curate, because that curation process is the cultivation process. That is your soil. But what happens is, is that you can gather so much knowledge if you don't curate it, if you don't trim it and keep it to where you understand what's going on, it can run wild. It could be a beast. <laughs> you see? So step by step, we'll walk through this today about how to express yourself in the multifaceted you versus James, one thumb. <laughs> it's like, your name means this small tone thump vibration, and you are identifying yourself with that name versus the symphony of who you really are. And then the icing on the cake is the language because it supports that. It allows you to be a cube. It allows you to be a square. It allows you to be in a box. And that's why I'm going to show you this language that this God brought down to confuse everyone. It was a box. And from that point, it put everyone in a box. So let me share some stuff here. Everyone that thought in that language, and this is the father and mother languages of English and the rest of the language, and I'm talking in this tense about Arabic, and I'm talking about English, and I'm talking about Hebrew. And I suspect, based on the accuracies of geometry, that all of the language consisted of the same thing, that they are just certain geometric shapes that when they get in your mind, they start to penetrate and bore and drill into your mind, trying to get into your holiest of holies and set itself up as God so that you can then fall down and worship it. And then the emblem will become true that man and woman will bow down to themselves and worship themselves. Worship, W-O-R, which is war, okay? That's where we get the word work from. Work creates war, too. Everyone is socialism. Everyone's trying to take from someone to give to someone else, right? So how to get out of the warship, this is when you turn your craft, this is your art, okay, into something that formulates you into being in duality or dualistic, thus allowing you to inherit the mark of the beast, which is two-strand DNA. Don't let these fools confuse you about how many strands of DNA that you have, because realistically, there's a level where you can have no DNA, no program, right, why they keep counting up the ladder. But the really reality of this is, which is what real masons, real builders, hundreds of thousands of years ago discovered, is that the one who was creating these planes was creating them in duality based on the geometry and the DNA, which is in two strands. But it's as simple as looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing how you have two of everything, pretty much. The only things you don't have two of was what couldn't be made dual. And this is a very key thing because this means that even if you're not trying to get in division, <laughs> even if you just want to be like neutral in this, balancing this, you're not only in one of these bodies, you're also speaking this language. 
in all these languages, we're moving twos, fours, sixes, and this is what we were talking about before, these so-called even or good numbers versus odd or strange numbers. So this also holds the riddle to everything that has taken place on the, on the planet, especially with the two most intelligent warring factions, one-strand DNA and three-strand DNA. And I'm going to take all that apart in just a moment. Well, let me take it slow. Let me look at all of the dissertation that I have here. Realize that battle is a lack of expression. So that means that the sword, which is the key component in the battle, a sword can be anything, it can be a bomb, missile, whatever, but the actual tool of division, which is in this case the words, will be a lack of expression because this is what happened. If you get so crazy where you have to now stab somebody with a sword, things really got out of hand. You need to actually ask yourself if maybe it's you that's out of control, <laughs> right? Because this is a bad lack of expression if you're supposed to be wise. And this is what we talked about the other day. We talked about that anyone could be a witch or a warlock. Once they start doing the curses, start you know, cursing at people, and start thinking about a person negatively and hating them, well, shit, that's a witch or a warlock. There's not much more to it. If there was, then they wouldn't be a witch or a warlock. And so we're talking about these levels then. So when you get into this higher stage of your conscious, really a more balanced stage, you start to see that this talking is a crazy lack of expression because not only are people misunderstanding me or misunderstanding me, but I'm also not expressing truly what I'm really wanting to express to them. And I'm only talking at this point for those who've reached that stage in their conscience, because some people are, are in their consciousness wanting to actually do something malevolent to other individuals. But I'm talking about the individuals who are actually trying to do something, but it just keeps coming out wrong. Every time they get, keep getting in this battle, it's with grandma now, and it's now it's with, with dad, and all you're trying to do is help them, <laughs> right? And this is because these words are a, a horrible lack of expression. They're, they're, they're a horrible lack of expression. When you, with your multi-symphony new state of consciousness, try to show them what you're uh, about by talking to them, now the trick has begun. Because the cube, the Rubik's cube, if you may, now starts tumbling. Now everything is about to get mixed up, turned around, put in a corner, at an angle. All of this kind of stuff is about to happen when you talk even the most eloquent, okay? And so this is just calling it like it is. And the reason for this, I have a reason for this too. Why is it like this? Well, not only is it because we probably are supposed to be using our frontal lobe and triangulating everything that we have that is, that, that's still in separation and then bringing it all to one focal point, but it's also because of what the tongue really is. <laughs> and we talked about this. I mean, I have to mention it again because everything is in perspective, but the tongue is the phallus of the face. Because as I mentioned, the holiest of holies is in the center of your head. So this lets you know that the real microcosmic body, the real orb, is your head. It's like the earth of you. It is the globe of you, okay? That's why the skull becomes so important. Because inside of that template, there's a holies of holies in there. But if you see your whole skull then as just a complete body, then you would need to understand where your tongue is right around the place where your phallus or your yoni would be. Okay? In fact, your mouth is a phallus and yoni, people. <laughs> I mean, if we weren't so busy looking at everything else and looking at herself, maybe you would turn it aside and notice your visical mouth and then stick your tongue out and notice your phallus. And then notice how the creative principle is on your face that when you form and shape and fashion something to talk about something that you want to do, the idea begins to take it into manifestation so it can be created. The same way that when you actually are ready to create life on this planet, you create that same act, but you need another component to accomplish that. Or do you? I mean, do you actually need the opposite sex to have a baby? In the higher worlds, no. The higher worlds are your head. It's androgen. It has the phallus and the yoni built into it. 
It has several of them, in fact. That's what the Sri Yantra is. That's what the cornucopic field of 528 herds is about. Okay? And what this is literally about is, is that all over your head is all of these wombs. Okay? And remember what we talked about is sitting back and picturing this. But the one that is coming from the mouth is the most carnal, meaning that it actually works more with uh, the gunad, as we called it, the lower expression of self-immediate gratification. So still remember what you're doing. It's like, I want respect now. You even got to say that. Like, imagine sitting there in the corner demanding respect from people without talking. <laughs> right? That's another level. That's when you get devotion which is true respect, okay? Devotion is, is that people feel you. Something's coming off of you, and they just have to say, well, shit, I don't know what it is, but buddy over there has accomplished something. It's, I'm devoted. Like I, I, that's something that I want to do, because the person's actually seeing it, okay? So, again, realize that the words, the swords, and that tongue, which actually looks like the tip of a sword, it's the lick of the flame that, on the tip of the sword, right? So understand what it is. It's about to go into battle. It's about to express itself. So what I'm, I'm saying then is, is that it doesn't mean that you can't talk anymore. Still watch it, though. But it means that talking is not the only way that you have to express yourself. And in, in fact, if you stop talking as much, you probably can get some stuff really done. You probably can get your inventions out there. You probably can really start developing something. Because when you talk, then you're only pushing it out. Talk, that's why people who have powerful words talk a little bit. Because they know when they say something, they got to fulfill it. And because it's 3D plane with 10 digits, when you have two hands to build what you're about to create, then there's gonna, that's gonna, that equals time, as we talk about the zero and the one. That's what equals time. It's the, the distance between your projection and when it actually appears. So, of course, when you're not dealing with such cumbersome cube-like programs, those are moved completely out of the way, you have spontaneous manifestation. Okay? Spontaneous manifestation is when you're not using a cube. Now, let me tell you about this cube. Okay? And if you look at the screen, because so for those laying back like they're in a psychological chair or whatever, go ahead and look at the screen really briefly, and I'm going to show you, I'm gonna show you something. And I'm going to upload it like we used to do in the old school, which was we would load the pictures right in the live stream. And we wouldn't depend on all this stuff that 10,000 people need to run for. It starts up. So you see me run around the studio like Flash before the show starts. So check this out. Now this is what I was, we were talking about this before. We were talking about how the Hebrew language is the Star of David, which is really the Megan star. If it's any Star of David, it's the Star of Dravid, because Dravid was a Dravidian. Dravid was where the Brahmins came from. Dravid was a Naga, okay? So what happens is, is that it, now it's not rocket science, it's, that's the cube in the middle, okay? So this authenticates, this is a cube language, okay? So let's go on. What happened just recently is I was, um, let me see where my post button is. What I was doing is I was actually in um, some research. And during that research, there was, and I'm trying to see how I can upload something here, excuse me. But in that research, what there was is there was a, a video of inside of the Kaaba, which is very difficult to get. Because I still remember back when I was a Muslim, you couldn't even pull a picture out, let alone something about the Kaaba inside. And the world has gotten so wide open with revealing what he's doing, the Brotherhood of Saud, who are the Saudi Arabians, black oil, black snake, actually are bawling out, wheeling out, and do a selfie inside of the Kaaba. So as I was telling people before, all you need to be sometime is what I call the fly on the wall. That's the actual person that is not necessarily looking at what is being done but looking at what's on the wall. This proves, because this is on inside of the Kaaba on the wall. Now, somebody saw that right off the bat. Nowadays, 
right? And to see this image, you need to just go to live stream and look. And if someone saw that on the wall now, they'd say, yo, and why you got this big RFID tag on your wall? <laughs> or with a big RF tag on your wall? Like, is that go to your website or something? <laughs> and the truth is, is that this is what Arabic is written like in the Kufic script, okay? Which you can look up yourself. And this is not new. This is something been going on in ancient times. Now remember, like this is inside the Kaaba, so they're not going to put anything that just got, come off this press made from China and then put it in there. They're going to use all, all of what's been there since the beginning, right? And what's in there is this, which actually says that there is no God but Allah. Allah's putting his mark on the whole thing inside the cube, in the incubation, and utilizing the hyperdimensional language, which is more like a dinkras. It's more like, you know, if, to me, you see it as like an alien coding or something. But this is what I was saying in the Dimitri, is that you see this language running through people. In, in Costa Rica, it just looks like it's Aztec. I have yet to get to other places with the third eye open and see what exactly uh, the geometry is running through, the, uh, or the language running through the people that live in that country. But I'd be willing to say that it would be based on the code that they're on. Okay? And that this code would then affect every way that they think, everything they do, almost like, well, not almost like, it's a program, damn it. I'm so tired of people just not saying what the hell is going on and beating around the bush and putting gloves on and putting toilet tissue on their fingers and just trying to do anything but hurt somebody. But damn, let's get out of fear here. The program is running, okay? And this program, what I'm realizing, there's an artificial one Right? There's an artificial one running, and then there's another one running very close to it that is based on the genuine model, meaning how things actually were in the beginning of the arrival of the beings that we're calling humans into this particular state of consciousness. It's kind of crazy for us to keep talking about all these worlds and all these different kind of things. Like, yeah, that's a given, like, but where are we all stationed at? Okay? And I'm going to show you the geometry that is more associated, because I did have the, the image, but the image is either a concave or a convex triangle, but for me, for me to show it to you truly is, is more of its organic shape, which is as a yoni, you would see it here. And there's another picture about to be posted, and this is known as the stone. Okay, this is the stone that is on the outside of the cube. So this is, I mean, you could see that the biggest play is, is cooties, meaning that if while we're young, we're in this whole Christian state of mind, and you're not even supposed to talk about sex, you're not talking about, so you're not supposed to talk about six then, which is a six-sided cube. And what happens then is you talk about it later on, it's uncomfortable. If you say, oh my goodness, he's talking about it, it's X-rated, oh my goodness, yeah. But yet, and still, they turn, turn on the movie Shorty with the boobs out and ass twerking and all sorts of stuff, right? But then when it's time to talk about what is really happening on our planet with, the, with more of these archonic forms, meaning larger forms that are being birthed, that... Men who work the cabal are putting themselves inside up to control like vehicles, okay? And, but the same thing applies. It's the duplication of what you see in nature. A yoni must be present. And this is a yoni. This is a womb. This would be the vagina then. And then the box, as they call it in, even now in slang, her box, would be where it needs to be cultivated at, right? So the story is here, and I've studied it for probably thousands of years, running this being down in particular, is that a star fell from the sky, but it was a meteor. And from the moment this thing landed, the first altar was set up because it was sentient. So it knew how to send this cube right into the mind of the first person, in this case it was Brahma or Abraham, who actually came in contact with it. And it shows you the nature right away because the first thing is asked is a sacrifice. Give me something. Now, have you ever had someone that you just met for the first time and they're already asking for something? Isn't that like a turnoff? So why is it not the same thing with these beings? That if you're asking for something, give me your firstborn, give me your 10%, give me your best of the crop, give me this, give me, give me, give me. Man, this is a taker, right? So we hunt takers all around the galaxy like because they come into worlds, they attempt to emulate and become the surrogates of the planet. They build a box. <laughs> 
that supposedly is a, a cognate of the real womb of the planet, and then they start taking everything from nature and then introducing it to everyone like they created it. Hello, medicine, Merck, Pfizer, all the rest of these poor alchemists trying to turn a little dirt into gold, meaning trying to turn earth into anything, always in that kind of pursuit of transmutation externally, but yet missing the real alchemical procedure, procedure that goes on with inside one's consciousness. So to really understand why this resonates with people so much, like why they can't let it go so much, it, it's because it's themselves, but it's been externalized. It's been put right in front of them and been given a graven image, meaning a graven image, not a really good uh, 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 description of who we are, but close enough that if you can fool people to believe that it's not them, which is the whole trick to religions, God is not you. It's some other being that you have yet to achieve and yet to get to, okay? That's not the truth. The truth is we are supreme beings. Actually, excuse me, that is the truth because God is still the Germanic God, good. It is still a word play. Like when they say we, God controls everything, then if God is the king of Britain and everything only consists of money, then you see how that could be true. So that's called a forked tongue. Okay, it's like a truth and a lie. It's the truth if you believe it. So this is what creating temples were about, or templates. Okay, now notice here, and I'm so I, some people, so the Muslims or uh, ex-Muslims or whatever is going on, because I know there's a constant war going on in people's mind when they listen. They don't think I'm just picking on Muslims. Here we go with the Temple of Solomon, the height of everything that goes on in the whole Christian Orthodox sphere, okay? Gnosticism is not included. So what happens here is, is that you notice that the holies of holies, and I'll source one more picture here, and there's not much pictures here today, by the way. The holies of holies is a cube. So what I'm saying is, is that the way they draw out the template of the new state of consciousness, i.e. the new Jerusalem that they want to put into or embed in the DNA of our consciousness is to make the mind a square. And this is why there's that old UN picture with the square heads. <laughs> that every, The humans are depicted as having square heads. Let me see if I can find that. Square head UN photo. Right, because I'm sure somebody on above top secret then, then got it out there. But you know what I mean. There was a picture, and it was, I believe, the Tower of Babel in the, in, the, uh, in the background. Let me see, Tower of Babel. And then that was Britain, I believe. And then the people that were below it were depicted with having square heads. And nobody, because the whole image was cryptic, so they figured that there's got to be something about why the heads are square. And here it is right here. It comes up. And just so you understand it's replete with all the symbolism. Like, they're not hiding, really. They just are counting on everyone being ignorant and not knowing what the symbols mean. Symbols speak volumes. To the uninitiated, they confuse. To the initiated, they lead one down the trail of understanding how to make it back to where. Where the throne is. Where the tron is. Okay, we're not going to get off the topic here. That'll be later. But meaning that all these roads lead to Rome. <laughs> There's a central source to this kind of data information. It's very easy to track. Okay, so you see that the holiest of holies is depicted as a square because that is the block shape of the mind. And let me get the other picture here. Once accepting this square language. <laughs> and so if you can understand how long these cultures have been running, these petri dishes have been running, then you can kind of get an idea of how long we've been in this stage of consciousness because the foundations of this world, meaning the first humans to arrive to accept blockhead, <laughs> were actually our predecessors and contained all of us inside of their DNA, which was corrupted over time by God confusing them using language. Okay, let us go down and confuse them. What was used? Language. What was, we, what, were everyone do, what was everyone doing before? Working in unison. What were they building? A tower. What was that tower? That tower was yourself. People were only building themselves, all is self. They were knowing that if they keep building and repleting and, 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 and actually um, uh, 
creating that perfection within themselves, then they were also reflecting that in the reality. And this is how you got what you're calling nature. That's why I was telling you the other week that all the great beings left trees, left flowers, left insects, left certain signatures of themselves so that their greatness always could be encased in that. No matter how, many, how much division took place on earth, it would be a little bitty uh, 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 beetle at this point or a little bitty. You know, there's tons of these the, uh, different kinds of uh, insects that are around that contain spectacular sets of, of different stages of consciousness, but not in amplification. Everything that's here in the planet has been divided in cut, shape, form, and fashion by one who wants to make us blockheads. There's a Masonic template that shows the man uh, that they want to craft with a block or a square as a head. Okay? And then the reason why I have to be repetitious here is because some people think it's a game. And what happens here is that you can get played in this game. And if you don't realize that, again, you need to get outside of the box, get outside of the body, meaning that the box becomes a template that starts to form itself around your consciousness. People need to understand this is a progress, this so-called great work which meant something totally different back in the days than it means now. So let me get back on track or forward on it and talk about why when you're teaching awakening from that third grade level, while still teaching also about even beyond grades, you start becoming a hypocrite. You become harpocrates. And the reason is, is remember, the third grade teacher is responsible for telling you that the gods are malevolent, <laughs> while the one who is not in grades at all doesn't even consider good and evil, malevolence or benevolence. It's beyond that. It's actually not allowing those thoughts to enter your mind so you can be free-flowing, so that you can actually begin to harness the light within. So do you see how the third grade teacher is also the Messiah, is also the Bodhisattva, is also the bridge, but is also burdened or sacrificing at times, many times, because, you know, a bridge, everyone's walking across you. It's like, uh, it's third grade teacher, ah, <laughs> stay back in third grade, I'm, I told you, it's better grade than this. You're still in duality. I don't even know why you're still teaching that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, they didn't come through your class. <laughs> but what I'm also still challenging the third grade teachers is to get multifaceted, because, yeah, it does become a byproduct of what you're doing. And one thing, another, you learn from the students. Like, yeah, let's go into a multifaceted where you're learning all grades and then no grade at the same time. It can be done. But still realize what we're talking about, though, is that, so if someone asks me, what do you think about the UN? I may be in clear face mode and be forced to go into vast face simply because of being in this particular position as a teacher to school this individual for once and for all to not give up their power to anything and to not affiliate with those who are not transparent, which is a basic principle in that if you cannot gain that principle, you will be abused throughout all of your existences until you do. Meaning that if you don't want to be dolphin face, this means actually responsible for every breath that you take, then you're going to need surrogate mama to actually help you out in this one, rather than looking at real mother who's inside of you, which is Mapa. The, what's really taking care of you is the decision for you to take care of yourself. That must come first. Because all the tools can be available. We need to realize what's happening. Nature does have all these cures, but it's still up to us to decide if we want to put them in our body and utilize them and understand about them. So it's not really nature who's in control then. It's us. So, and that comes from whether you're going to have the cure or whether you're going to have the sickness. You're going to decide. So let's keep going. So what happens is, we figured out then that the tongue projects a lot of things that it basically expects the rest of the body to carry out. If it's in a physical level, now at the stage of where our consciousness is. But before, what we were doing is we were projecting it so solid in our minds. You could see it just as clear as you're looking at the visuals today, or the laptop that you're looking on. You could see it just like that, that it will poof, tesseract itself right into the reality. Boom. Spontaneous manifestation. So this is why it was very important for all the ancestors 
to create in these kind of symmetrical designs because that's how they were capable of bringing out beings that had some level of it being able to achieve balance, okay? Meaning that in the dualistic form, there is a chance that you will merge them together and achieve balance. But the symmetry of the dualism is the incubation stage. It is the incubation stage of you to become what's next, okay? And so this, why, this is why I had to slow down the conversation a lot today because this path is so narrow. It really is. It's like if you step to the left just a little bit in your understanding about what's being said, you will come off balance because what's, you have to really make it introspective to yourself. You can't at any point go outside and try to find an example of this within someone else that you want to blame. <laughs> That's just going to throw things off balance in the judgment of duality. So, I was, a talking, I was talking about how this bridge then, which is why I realized they, the, the Masons named the highest level initiation book that they have a bridge to the light, right? And why they always use the bridge in the rainbow component. There is something very deep about that because it is an arc, okay? And so this is the scripture says, God says, now you remember the covenant that I have with you, Every time you see the rainbow, because it's a symbol of my ark in the sky, meaning that this seven colors is the symbol of the division, because when you shine light into a prism, it becomes seven colors, right? And seven days of the week and seven churches, and then it all, you know, keeps going from there, right? So what we're seeing is then is that this ark or bridge is serving two purposes. One, what you would say is malevolent, and one that's benevolent. The malevolent is, is that anytime you now build a bridge between two opposing forces and, and they start crossing, which is a symbol of the cross, when they start crossing, conflict and chaos is going to begin. But what also is occurring is what was lost and forgotten is now known. What is hidden is now seen. So do you see where there's a double-edged sword here with the craft, meaning that with these levels of knowledge, such as Freemasonry, et cetera, is that they're lying truth. <laughs> it's the forked tongue. Because what happens is, is that, yes, we do need to build bridges to the spaces where there are those who believe that they are lost. And those who take that mission and actually carry out that act they are amongst the greatest of us and that's written in what's in all of our belief systems the christ the one who basically or the the, the krishna or or, or 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 the tamus the ones who decided to go and do something that everyone else wasn't doing but guess what we are now making it to where everyone is moving collectively to defeat something that is affecting all of us which is fear because the thing about fear, because fear is actually created from these kind of actions, but fear, you don't want to actually go and approach it by yourself generally. It is your nature to go and approach it with others that may not necessarily even know what they're getting into either, but at least you know we're together. Meaning that there is nothing that we cannot deal with, we cannot approach, and we cannot solve when we work as the collective. So no one will ever be able to convince me edgewise. And the great work, really, the one who's really building the temple, the one who's shaping, forfeiting, uh, forming, and fashioning, is doing that to themselves, not to other members in the reality, especially in a malevolent way, meaning that you have to first become the perfection before you can actually show it. You can always talk about it, though. Notice why talking becomes also that in-between point. It, it's, it's not the manifestation yet, it's to talk about the manifestation, okay? And so this is a deep thing because it's allowing you to actually take it step by step to the actual chain reaction of the consciousness to see that where there's rats, there's cats, there's dogs, meaning that one thing when you accept it, it leads to something else next. And if we can go back into the chromosomes, as we talk about, uh, I talked about on Facebook, the 22 chromosomes or the 22 paths of the tree of life, 
what they call the sephira. That's the current template, because in that template, they're using the number 22. Where have we seen this number before? We've seen it in the original Hebrew language. The original Hebrew language had 22 characters. This means the DNA is being shaped like a cube. But to go even deeper, well, let's wait. But just remember that the 22 paths is why most people keep seeing 1111. 1111, the digital time code. Look at the code. The code is a cube. What do they say about the Old Testament in the Talmud? It contains the formula for a computer. Ah, cut. It is a computer. It already has a program loaded. Anyone that wants to load that program shapes, forms, fashions, and binds themselves to that program, takes the mark of that program, and then functions as if the program is them. Thus, they become a program. But what were they before they took the program? Because surely that's not them. That's when you're looking at somebody and you're like, man, this is not you, man. The way you're acting, man, the way you're, this is not you, man. And so that's what I'm saying to every single person that hears this message. Man, this is not you. Man, last time I saw you, man, you was gliding across this thing. You were in full regalia. <laughs> Chakras blown open. There was no hindrance. You were in full expression in imbalance, you knew what you were doing. Okay, so let's go further here. Now, the current program you're on, you can call five and six, which is pentagram hexagram. Okay, and this is heaven and earth, right? So the current program that's running is attempting to merge heaven with earth. This is the actual realization that there are ethereal beings, right? That's all of what this new craft is about. Like people are reading these books and tapping into these angels and drawing these stars on the ground. And remember, these ages last what you would see as an age of the zodiac. So a certain amount of thousands of years, you would get five and six, the merging in from five into six. Don't be afraid to, not, to hit your ejector seat and thrust out of the program completely, okay? Remember, I'm not talking to you about where you have to remain. I'm talking to you about where you are. You can choose to leave at any point, but realize where you are first. Five and six, this is where the dimension is next, meaning the fire, the passion of fire, or the fire and the passion of fire going into six or sex, then create seven. You see what I mean? So the next age will be seven, meaning actually outside of time, when things from outside of the time merge back in time, okay? And this is, that geometry has actually been discovered. Here it is. There was a seven-sided face that Pythagoras, that old Python, was hiding and talked about it and said it couldn't be achieved, but meaning that what now, and even the, 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 the bringing of this kind of geometry and understanding of it fully, which is the geometry of the heart, it's the chestahedron, that that actually is the symbol that on this dimension that we're living on, that what has normally been unseen, which is seven, what cannot be generally divided by a circle into a circle by a computer, will become seen by the beings that can do it, can actually draw, and this gets a little mathematic, the square root of three, which the human cannot count, I mean, excuse me, the computer cannot calculate. Now, now we're going to go in, because everyone's like, okay, let's go into the deepness. So here's the depth. As deep as it gets. What happens then is, is that it's two circles, okay? And when these two circles come together, these are two worlds. When the two worlds come together, they form in the center the visica. Okay? So the visica then is the, sim the symbol of who is the mediator in the reality. Okay? Who is the mediator? Who is the go between? Who gets people in and out? Okay? And I'm not going to answer that question for you but rather explain to you that it's as simple as looking at the concave triangle. It's as simple as looking at 
one of the most beautiful beings that has ever arrived on the planet. And that's, of course, woman. It's responsible for getting people in and out. Okay? But mainly, certain parts of the woman, which connect to more massive things, meaning that the womb of creation is present. So let me explain to you once again about the stages. Because each time another entity, per se, in the zodiacal system is present, then there's something to learn. When you're not seeing that entity as separate than you, thus falling down and worshiping it, bowing down on your face, you can see nothing. Looking straight into it and looking into its eyes, looking into the fear and not being afraid of it is going to allow you to see everything. That Earth's Kundalini is moving through Earth's body and getting ready to awaken at a certain point. Meaning your Kundalini may be in your root chakras. Earth may be in her Manipur or its Manipur chakra. It's androgynin. It's two spheres, double D. 2D, meaning two Ds coming together. That's the sphere of this planet, okay? So what we're talking about then is because I don't want people to see any of this as positive and negative, but in a world, there is a whirl, okay? Meaning there is a spiral, okay? And this whirling is the same thing as the Sri Yantra and the same thing as the multiple wombs. This whirling makes it go round. And if it didn't go round, it would actually be unmovable, meaning that it would not be in the scope of even being a world. And that's why they talk about when the world will be over is when we go into another stage of consciousness, because then it will cease to exist as a two-dimensional projection. It will go into a multi multifaceted projection and none of the two-dimensional or dualistic shapes will remain because they cannot remain in the reality of consciousness that we've created. So let's not make it complex. I'm going to take a break really quick here because I'm about halfway through, maybe even less. There's no rush. I want you to think about the world in the world, okay? Because the deep knowledge here that's being revealed is that last time I checked in the ancient scripts, the name for the supreme being meant unmovable, meaning no program, no DNA. When the world begins, or the spiral of the DNA, especially dual DNA that's in conflicts, okay, then that's actually going to create the world as we know it. So when one ceases to get involved in such things, they actually cease to be in a world, however that happens. Some people say, oh, am I going to die? Am I going to die? Oh, my goodness, here we go. How can you die when you just discovered the real key to life? You, you're dead now. <laughs> okay, so what we're talking about is, is when the world begins to move or the world begins to move so slow because you're moving so fast that it even seems to stop and you freeze time. You see, that's when you can control the world. Control the world. This is the world or the world within. What is the world or the world within? It is the DNA. Okay? So what was the big beef? The dualistic God, Deus, Deus, Pater, the first Cadman to attempt to actually get in the CAD or AutoCAD and create a new template. Like I say, Lucifer decided he wanted to be like the creator. <laughs> so he created something. But it only had two-strand DNA. Because the, it was about separation, my friends. Think about what's being said. When one wants to do something all by themselves, the only thing that they can do is create separation. This is a total realization. You must know and include everyone in it. So the act of the creation of the phi base body, Lucifer, son of the morning, right? What does that mean? Son of the morning, meaning Ningrishida, and the more, meaning dark more, which taught the Spaniards and all the rest of these people, okay? It was a star, a pentagram, a blazing star. 
that was used to create five. The power of God was in man's hand. Five senses, okay? And then with the hammers of Thor, we created. With this hammer and with this sword, dualism. Even when we make babies, they come out dual, okay? And so this is why the great teachers and the wise ones showed up three, <laughs> right? So they say, hey, you guys are in two. Maybe you should think about three. Three wise men, okay? Each with symbolisms of how to merge two things together, okay? And this is what started the age of what I call triquera, which is basically three-strand DNA, what you're seeing on the soccer ball right now. Because the mediators, which are the reptiles, the ones with the visica eyes, the ones who play the judge, they're still the Jews, they're still in jury. You see what I mean? What happens is, is that they create games like soccer in order to allow people like Costa Rica's crunk right now because they're winning, but will they really go to the World Cup? Right? Will they really go to the chalice? <laughs> right? And then all of the symbology that's being used, if you understand what's happening, it's your team versus the other team. Now, so with somebody you like, somebody you don't like, duality, 11-11. We even show the soccer field, 11 players against 11 against 11. So they're taking the template, the blueprint of the body, and then putting it right in front of everyone, and then wondering why everyone's attracted to it, because it's the program that they're on. They're looking into a mirror, and they're seeing microcosmic versions of themselves running around all messy. You see? So what happens is, is that then you got your team, but when your team loses, you get sore for a minute. Sorcerer, it's still soccer. So what happens is, it's just the name of the teaching of a sorcerer. So it's still soccer. So you get sore for a moment, but then you decide to join another team. And this gets you to the next stage of your so-called, uh, uh, as they talk about your, the next stage of the ranking, okay? So then you, you start to ride with another team. And then even that team loses, you're sore again, and then you make another choice all the way to the last game where you've now chose the final team that you're going to choose. This is it, as you say. I, my team does not win if Lancashire or Manchester or, or, or Ghana does not win, then I'm going to be upset. But that's fine because at that point, all the sorcerers have done is channel all the energy into one point that can receive it. There's definitely a womb out there in every stadium. That's where they're built on top of. So then they get their control over the womb with the geomancy, get the old famous yin and yang, symbol as old as, as any other symbol in time, and they start the duality on the last game. And then from that point, everyone pole shifts. <laughs> they either become overall negative or overall positive, and they join their actual side, and then they go to their next stage, because that's what it does, because you just switch the person from a zero to a one. It goes to the next stage, and then they feel like they've started something new. I'm not going to be dealing with that team anymore. <laughs> you see? So what happens is, is that it's a big thing. When you have someone else, and you're on a reality, and you've got to understand my dilemma, when you're in a reality and you watch such child's play, literally, but then the damage and the results of why we're not teaching ourselves now and how many uh, quantons, I want to come up with another, another name, that you can get behind when someone else does know what is going on, but you don't, and they won't teach it to you, meaning that when you look in a standard laboratory of today, what you'll see is, is you'll see equipment that is off the chain, right? And if you've ever done a little bit of work yourself, you'll know that you didn't need much to really get accomplished what you were trying to do. You just needed a couple mixers, a laser, and then a few other things, right? And then you start, if you, if you not focus on yourself for a moment and just start thinking, but what do they have? <laughs> In those kinds of institutions, they're not seen in secret societies, but they have every single thing a secret society, real, a real secret society has, a ranking system, a chain of command, things that can't be told to one individual, and I'm changing this now so you will have visuals, 
Things that can't be told to one individual, but can be told to, another, told to another individual, it's top secret, it's classified. This is for your eyes only. That kind of behavior, right? So, but what happens is it has to be in plain sight. So when you see then people in the dimension, and I just posted another uh, picture, you start figuring this all out. You figure out what the cabal is. You figure out the cabal is a cable. But this cable or cable toe is shaped like a cube. And that the cube is a symbol of mind control because mind control is in a hexagon. That's why communication is in a hexagon. A hive is in a hexagon. So instead of the hive, organic hive mind of nature, meaning that there's a hive that nature exists on, that when you jump into that, you have connection to all the beings that live in nature. You communicate with everything. You communicate with, man, you can imagine how long some of this stuff has really been here, these metals, these elements. So that's the real hive. But then there's an artificial hive is what I'm trying to tell you that this language is and these cubes are. They're artificial hives, so they, turn, they tune you into a hive. Let's say you're American and you're riding on that cube. And you think that that's the only cube, so you look at other people and you think that you're the, you're the best and you're better than them. And this is that stage of mind. And then the other cultures, they do the same thing. But meanwhile, why can't they peep game? Pentagrams on a Chinese flag, pentagrams on an American flag, pentagrams on an Israeli flag. Um, excuse me, there's a hexagram there. And then there's a pentagram on, the, uh, on the, um, the Arab flag. So what is it? It's the grand game. So the, the controller per se, is saying, well, we're going to make them printograms, and we're going to make them hexagrams, and then we're going to just have them keep colliding and going to war with each other, and this is the great word. We're going to accomplish this through this chaos on order, because that's going to bring the next age, and we're going to call that the new world order, and we're never going to reinvent it because it works. After all, why reinvent the wheel since our good old father, uh, a brand the Bless, or, or whatever name they're going to give him, uh, Brutus, actually gave us as a Germanic god of golf, who's a Nord and knows the Norse tradition. And this, they don't even know what the hell's going on anymore. These people, they're talking from the cube in their mind, right? They don't know who these beings really are. And interface with no being. You can't interface with no beings from this description with no cube riding in your mind. What you interface with is the infiltration. You interface with the grand form, great shape, and then start talking about something external after that. You would have to come with inner standing after that because you would have realized all that is within you unless what you saw scared you because that's what some people, they get scared when the deity run up on them and if they can't recognize that that's actually them, then they alter their state of consciousness and that's why there's always an altar in every template, in every temple there is an altar and they get down in the altar and then they forget everything that happened before and then they wash it all away and then they come out as supposed to be this new being. But you ain't no new being. <laughs> Meaning that this is nothing new in the cube. Like it's never going to be. That's why they use it because it always produces the same numbers that they're going to be able to calculate. You have to move in rare form. I say I'm mysterious. He moves in rare form. To do that, you only simply have to be you. Not the cube. See, because with the cube, if they know every way that it can be turned and everything that can be done with it, that's all this whole tetragramic and all this whole uh, uh, Jehovian, all these, uh, 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 these numbers that I call them tr Tron-based numbers that are also running computers too. The computers flopping, as they call it, a petaflop, flopping in the same increments that our brains are flopping on now. How? Because we've taken the code. So that's why we say we break the code, man. We break the matrix. Who are you talking to? We keep going because I was trying to explain to you again that the reptilians have taken themselves as the mediators because the schism that occurred in the real craft, meaning there was a mutiny on board, and some have dreamed about this when I airlocked every, all the bad ones on the other side of the ship. And this was because some went back to one strand DNA. And this was an issue because one strand DNA, because if you can imagine, so what was presented then that Lucifer screwed up, created the two strand DNA, and the only thing that was left is to either figure out how to make no DNA, meaning take everyone back to a, a program where they had no program, extreme deprogramming. That's called like walking your way out of it rather than going through it, trying to reach nine and then jumping out the side, just backing out from one to zero, right? Oh my goodness. Those who went from their two-strand DNA, which were workers of the craft, 
back into their reptilian DNA immediately got locked onto a hive because that hive already existed. It was the sheath of the foundation for universes that existed before us, i.e. dinosaur, okay? So what happened is, is that those individuals in that stage of consciousness didn't mesh well with the reality. It was, a, it was primitive compared to even a two-strand DNA reality. So understand, Lucifer, light bearer, was trying to jump the entire thing off by becoming a catalyst of duality by separating itself from God. Meanwhile, it's all a big plan. You see what I mean? For three to come into play, meaning the triquare or the trinity or when everyone triangulates themselves and then actually figures out where they are and that they're gods. That was Egypt. And then all of a sudden the door opens up and then the door has this blazing fire right there and the only people that can go through it are the ones with no fear. That's the Sphinx. So then there was those that walked over in through fire, into the fire and actually came out sexed, meaning actually having two components, two interlacing triangles, a male, female, somewhat of an androgynous. okay? And then from that point, realizing that they had a womb that can incept in concept, meaning a male or a female, that then they realized that they could begin to discover the spaces that were outside of time because this was allowing endless replication. Sex does. Be fruitful, multiply was the first command. So it keeps multiplying, multiplying, as long as we're multiplying, it's going to be difficult to be terminated. So at that point, by the time we would come to the end of time, we would have figured it out. So that's what this is all about, is that we figured it out. Now it's about getting other people in their own facet, in their own way of seeing things, after all these cycles have run across, because people are on different stages now. You get worlds entwined within worlds, right? So think about this. Let's get back to our visual here before we take a break. I'm posting a picture here, and it should be very clear then that when someone steps up as mediator, it means that they take the role of the reptile. And this is because the reptile is more like a very stern creature that makes sure that three-dimensional matrices are always available despite the heroes that come through that want to actually collapse them, okay? So they become like the guardian angels of 3D based realities. We're not talking positive or negative here. Just you'll see this everywhere once you understand what is actually taking place and, wh and, and why symbolism is used and then acts are carried out. And I'm posting another picture here. Obviously, you can see the belt there. This is no mystery, by the way. There's hundreds of pictures like this in different settings. So don't just think it was a, a good shot in that, oh, because I see people nowadays, they're regressing. They're like, well, do, do you think she's really involved in that? I'm like, man, I need to stop talking because I'm not going to go back to trying to go to the ABCs again with this whole thing about what you see is WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. This is, this is Wicca in a tense. Look at it. it. What you see is what you get. They bend meaning that they actually bow and bend themselves into an uh, aspect in the reality in order to become the mediators. And because the mediators have certain benefits in the reality. Everything has its pros and cons, but it's nothing new. These are ancient walls I'm showing you the pictures of right here. So again, these are, these are ancient walls, so it was all the same. So this is also why I'm telling you there's cycles to this. Don't think that, okay, so we're on five and six, and five and six has never came before. That's not what's happening. Anyone excuse me, working with their chakras, knows this, that you keep cycling, right? So you'll be at five and six again, but you either be waxed stronger or waxed, or waxed uh, or waned. You'll be either waxed stronger or you would have waned every time you revisit. Notice how certain people always come around at a certain time. People that are closer in your orbit, you see them every day, while either people further out in your orbit, you may see them once a year. And then if you were really peeping everything that was going on, if you were a stickler for detail, you would notice that there's other people that you keep crossing by that you don't know. Like that same guy in traffic, he's like, oh, he's going to work. Chief, we always pass each other. You even start honking. What the hell's going on? Orbits. Okay, so while everyone's on their orbit, I'm causing the 2012, meaning a lineup within everyone. Let's line up. It's like, let's go ahead and finish these bridges. Then you can't build no bridge halfway. This means you can't give people pieces of the knowledge and then not give them the rest of the way. But the rest of the way is experience. So that's why I'm making my move. That's why open source spirituality will begin. Because the real experience without interruption will come forth on the planet without delay. So let me, again, take a brief moment, get some water, 
get myself refreshed, I got about 30% of the conversation left. Still deciding if I'm going to take any questions, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to take those questions inside the chat box so that way people can, can communicate and, and at least ask their questions because I'm, I'm not saying also when people say that, uh, or people think that, oh, this is the last season, oh my goodness, no, it's going to go away. You know, there's no fear here, okay? And as I told you before, it's, it's, it's the manner of the mission. In this case, it's the mission. I'm with the mission. So what we all have to see is that from here, the only thing is that it can only get better, that my interaction with this reality will be in the full form of who I am. Because what happens is, is that sometimes things need to cultivate. You know, if you, even I'm looking at my filing system, the filing system's all messed up, and you know, I just moved into a new place, and there's a new baby here, and then there's people that have left, people that have came, and stuff's organized. That, that's not going to produce what I would want to produce as an expression of what we really have, have come across here and what we're really actually about. Because the transmutation and all the knowledge of how to complete it is right before us. We know how to do it. We ran through it in a very rough way, but now we need to get the proper people that are going to really support to take this to where it needs to go. And it's not a problem with asking for people to, to assist and to support you. When a person can go and assist and support, they build right now a $50 million building down there, right? So it's everyone assist and support and build another cube. So when it's time to build a cube, then peep the game. When it's time to build another cube, Everyone to another wall, right? You can always get people to sign up to build a wall. <laughs> but when it comes dying time to tear down the wall, that's when you look around and you don't find too many people wanting to be there to actually pull that wall down, okay? And so this is also has to do with your strength of, of, of your real power because when you come into your true power, you knock down walls. It's like you break down walls. And then also you are a guardian in that. Like you becoming the bridge also means you're a portal. So you do play customs. You're the one that's saying, okay, you being, coming from uh, uh, fifth spatial, these beings here actually need this kind of parallax of you, this kind of pr uh, projection from you, because we know you can project anything, you can even project fear, but that's not what these beings need. You get it? So through me, you come through me, and then I will shape, form, and fashion you in the proper expression to communicate with these people. So I'm telling you what's really happening is that when these supposedly other states of consciousness, the ones even that are trying to help, the ones that are trying to hurt, they need to come through a pentagram. They need to come through something that can shape, form, and fashion them in, into the right geometry to be able to get into this reality, to be able to, uh, to go into this net, okay? Because certain geometries, the net resists them. They can't get in it. They can't get through the atmosphere. And this is why even in our world, phi is based on the shell, because the shell are the atmospheres that we're creating. But this is why phi was given the symbol of the pentagram, 72 degrees times five equaling 360 degrees, because that is the angle that the Jehovian sphere, 72, which is the Shem Ham Faresh, 72 names of God, and even in collaboration with the Saturnalian sphere, is actually entering or impregnating the grid or this planet or the net or the lattice work, which is in the shape of a known yoni. Okay, so it becomes like I'm li I'm listening to it now because I'm also talking. I'm listening, but it makes perfect sense, and I even feel you today that it makes perfect sense to you that you see. Well, look, this is the entire art of creation. It's actually in me. There's even examples of it in the world. Sometimes many bad examples, but it is still based on real principles that do when you meditate on them. They actually unlock anything that you may be focusing on right then. Any kind of questions that you may have, it's going to give you the true answers whether you want to take that or not. And so sometimes it be like bitter medication, meaning that it, the taste is bitter, but the benefit, it far outweighs that which is sweet. Meaning that if someone tells you, hey, maybe you need to work a little bit more on your skills. Like you need to present that in a better way. You can't, you take that and you take that as a lesson and you look at yourself because it's only mirrors. And so me, I'm going to do it every time because I signed up for this. I Meaning I signed up for the transmutation of the full expansion of my consciousness. Already took the DNA to a whole nother level. I see the grid. Like when I'm at night, when I open up my eyes and I can see different grids. And then it took me time to figure out what those grids really were in English, <laughs> but if I had just sat down and really felt it, I would have really known what it already was. Those shells in which that I put around me, those 
things and those languages and those constructs and those blueprints and those templates in which I've accepted. I've done this. And in that, when you gain all of those shields and medals and medallions and all these different things and you start putting it all on you, that's why all this stuff is shaped like geometry, all the shields and you know, pentagrams and all this stuff is geometry because you're just adding more clothes, C-L-O-T-H-E-S, C-L-O-S-E, more clothes to yourself so that way you're closed up and you're in fear because all of what you're wearing is what's differentiating you from everything else. It's like, look at this, no one has one of these, Mm, that's supposed to be a benefit. <laughs> huh? How are you going to be in a place where you have something that nobody else does and then somehow you're going to find yourself comfortable? And even greater, how are you going to somehow escape becoming some kind of oligarch or baby Illuminati yourself? Because that's all that kind of activity breeds. So this is why we understand that and we want with the, with the wholeness of our heart to begin to show people how to make this transformation, how to sign up for it without considering time. This means not saying I'm in a rush to do this, I'm too late, all these kind of different uh, accents of time that you may put on yourself and then start performing that great work of merging these opposites that are going on inside of you that, have, that are results of the temples or the templates that you've traveled through to begin to actually merge all those into the belief in one. This is true monotheism with inside of yourself Thus collapsing that last stage of that pyramid, which is the symbol of the Tetragrammaton, then collapsing that pyramid even further, which is the symbol of the, uh, of the ineffable name, and then collapsing that symbol even further, which is actually the symbol of the Trinity, and then collapsing that symbol even further, which is the symbol of the God, which is dualistic, and then collapsing that symbol even further, which is the point of origin before the bang, and then collapsing that symbol even further to realize that the point before the bang, meaning before division, when you had all your power, when it was limitless, when we were all together, when we were all family. See, that's, that's what we're going into, and it shall not delay. This is not something that I necessarily say when it's going to and not happen, except for with myself, meaning that you're the person responsible for deciding when you're going to get in this, but don't believe that it's just going to get started when you get there. The party's been going on, meaning that it's been expansion. This is what I feel in my mind with and especially before I go to bed, is just the grandiose things that are already going on in the worlds that are perfected, the ones where everyone came back together as to family. Nobody's trying to marry. Nobody's trying to part from one another. Nobody's trying to claim something. Nobody's trying to possess something. There's no uh, uh, certificates. There's no borders. There's no laws. There's no walls. There's no rules. There's no oaths. There's no pacts. There's no edicts. There's no creeds. There's no cultures. There's no colors. There's no lines. You see, all of that dissipates in the world in which we create. And this is what it is, it's groupthink. This is what open source does. It creates a world that is habitable, baby. Meaning that, see, I'm not on no street dream. I've seen street dreamers. I've seen people who wish they could do something and then wish until they die. Like I've had the opportunity to live that kind of life. And so for me, myself, I would always have to say, well, make sure, Sonny, that you're not doing the same thing everyone else is doing and imagining that you're more than you're not you need to actually bring forth the tools, bring your clear proofs. And that's what I'm saying. People don't need to ask me anymore about what I think about something. Look at the clear proofs. Like either study your own intuition, read the code of the matrix, because everyone went under the bus then, but realize that it breaks down to one simple thing. If you want to make it simple, for those who like simple, as they say they do, even though I know that they don't, until you get that cube out of your mind, you won't like simple. But it's as simple as never giving up your power to anything or to anyone. There's nothing outside of you. You can never be separated because it's impossible. We're all in the same biorhythm. I like someone posted something that said, the way to think outside the box is to know that there is no box, meaning to remove the entire framework from how you're trying to comprehend this all together and get into the butitude meaning the actual process of yourself where you're not thinking, thus sending signals out, what do they think about me or my stuff? That way you're not able to be let down. You can't fall as an angel, meaning you create something great and then all of a sudden it gets turned into debasement by those who cannot comprehend it. But even their sheer interaction with it allowed them to grow. I want to recharge. I want you to also go recharge. 
shake it off a little bit, do some and you know, and just kind of like stop thinking for a moment, especially if you feel somewhat overloaded, and then realize what's simple. Also realize there's a rewind button. Like it's not all going to leave today. There's no such thing as time. See what's been delivered because it actually gives you the keys to everything. It gives you the way out of the cube. It lets you know the entire identity of the cube or the cable or the cabal of the language, its true use and purpose, how it's a lack of expression to who you really are, and how once you begin to realize that, you realize that there is no cube, meaning that that does not belong to you. If anything, that it's something that belongs to everyone or no one, and that you have a, a greater sense of expression. It's already emitting from you. It does not need to be replaced because remember, what the grid is doing, so you can get, get it really clear, what this artificial grid is doing is creating a fake you, a clone. This is the Clone Wars. It creates a fake you using cubic shapes that are supposed to be like our real organic mother's yoni. And it's just not. It doesn't even feel the same. So let's take a break.